Welcome back. I want to get right to this breaking news. The Supreme Court hitting pause on the end of Title 42 after a plea from GOP states. Here now, Matt Schlapp, conservative political action coalition chairman and author of The Desecrators. Matt, it's always great to see you, and especially uh, at a time like this where we get the breaking news that the Supreme Court is saying, whoa, um, temporarily we're going to keep Title 42 in place. There were 19 states that had petitioned saying that the country is not ready for this, and the Supreme Court looked at the issue. Yeah, I, I, this is a very important thing. I think people were really concerned. Look, we've had chaos at our border for two straight years, but uh, with the Biden administration's discarding uh, of this rule, uh, I think people were very, very worried about what would happen over the holidays. And, and let's remember, um, there's a lot of politics around immigration, but then there's just a lot of reality and common sense. These towns around the border and the border states and then the cities where the Biden administration is just you know, tossing and chucking uh, people who uh, uh, come over the border illegally. Uh, this is creating chaos and hardship in all of these cities. Remember how uh, the mayor of Washington, D.C. had a fit when literally uh, a couple of thousand people showed up in Washington, D.C.? We're talking about five million people. We're talking about five million people over two years, just what we know of. So it's, the number's even higher than that. Uh, and the chaos can't continue without severe consequences and a lot yeah. of violence. It's really staggering to see what's happening to the country as a result of this. And the administration now asking for three and a half billion dollars, Matt, not to secure the border, but for processing, to be able to process everybody that has lined up waiting to get into the country. So um, we'll see where this goes. Uh, originally, you were not coming on to talk about this, but I, I was so glad to be able to ask you about it. Um, it sort of fits in with the general theme, though, of, of what we wanted to talk about tonight, which is President Biden's midterm report card when it comes to immigration. That's certainly part of it. Um, Americans graded him on the economy, immigration, foreign relations, and climate change. Um, Matt, listen to this and then react on the other side. F. I'd give him an F. Yeah. On the economy, I would give Joe Biden an F. We're still dealing with rampant inflation. Um, our gas prices have been skyrocketing. All kinds of drugs coming through the borders, trafficked kids, trafficked women. It's a nightmare, and he's definitely not improving it. So uh, that's what the folks are saying. They're saying that um, progress, you know, has not been positive. And um, at the end of the show, I'm going to talk about the economy and what's in store for 2023. I'll, I'll tease that and say I think it's a bleak picture ahead and people are going to have a big wake up call ahead of them. Um, your thoughts on, on where well, we are now? That's the whole thing. What happens tomorrow? What happens next quarter? What happens next year? And I think the Biden administration was able to work with the bureaucrats in the swamp to have kind of like faux economic growth towards uh, the end of the year here. But I think everybody who I trust in the economy and everybody I talk to says it's about to get much worse. Yeah. Uh, all this profligate spending they want to do in the omnibus bill uh, will do nothing but make inflation worse, will do nothing but make gas prices, food prices, all the prices of our staples to live our lives uh, go higher and get worse. And they don't have a plan fundamentally uh, for the economy going into next year. They've done everything possible to make it harder for a small business person to add another job or to grow their economy, the taxes, the regulation, not to mention the fuel costs. This is really a pernicious part of all this. It takes fuel to run any company in this country mm -hmm. and to raise your family. And they are just dead set against affordable fossil fuels. And it is radical. And that's part of my thesis, which is that the BLS can say inflation is coming down numerically based on the factors that they look at. But when you have high energy costs across the board, which this administration is committed to, right. and you have wages rising the way they are, those are two huge factors for companies. And what ends up happening is the bottom line is less and rates are going up. <laughs> The cost to borrow is higher, so you start laying people off. And that's what I'm most concerned about as we go into next year, that 2 million Americans are going to be losing their jobs. And Jerome Powell broadcast that at Jackson Hole. Yeah, I agree with you. And let me tell you, a message to these Republicans who are going along uh, with a wink and a nod to this profligate spending in this omnibus, this is no longer about politics. I get that politicians love to pork barrel spend. If we continue to spend like the Biden administration wants to, it'll destroy the economic livelihood of small business and our families. The Republican Party has a duty in lockstep to vote against any increases in spending. And, uh, and it just seems sad that too many 
Republican senators are going to go along with the same game. And you know what they're going to do? They're going to make our economic choices going into next year be few and far between. And it's a sad thing that they're going along with Biden on the spending. That is very frightening because spending is what got us into this mess to begin with. Um, and, and the spending certainly has to stop in order to improve the situation. You cannot expect Jerome Powell to wave a magic interest rate wand and, and continue to try to, um, you know, fix this economy without severe damage, Matt. So um, we I got to cut you. spending without cutting spending. We can't get out of the hole. Yeah. Good to see you, sir. Thank you so much for your insight. Always great to have you on. Merry Christmas. You too.